GIS application areas and user segment. Introduction. In this chapter, we will discuss about the GIS application areas and the user segments. That is, the user interface, important GIS user interface issues, future of GIS interface, guidelines for preparation of a GIS, application of GIS possibilities and limitations. GIS are now used extensively in government, business and research for a wide range of applications including environmental resource analysis, land use planning, location analysis, tax appraisal, utility and infrastructure planning, real estate analysis, marketing and demographic analysis, habitat study and archaeological analysis. One of the first major areas of GIS application is in natural resource management including the management of wildlife habitat, wild and scenic rivers, recreational resources, flood plains, wetlands, agricultural lands, aquifers, forest. One of the largest areas of GIS application has been in the facilities management. Users for GIS in this area includes locating underground pipes and cables, balancing loads in electrical network, planning facility maintenance and tracking energy use. Local, state and federal governments have found GIS particularly useful in land management. GIS has been commonly applied in areas like zoning and subdivision planning, land acquisition, environmental impact policy, water quality management and maintenance of ownership. More recent and innovative uses of GIS have used information based street networks. GIS has been found to be particularly useful in address matching, location analysis or the site selection and development of evacuation plans. Globally, the GIS market is moving in several directions simultaneously. The GIS technology is becoming a little easier for the mainstream IT to incorporate GIS into day-to-day -day applications. In the past, GIS has been and even now largely continues to be the preserve of few who can afford it. Conventional products have been expensive and extremely hard to use for common users. In India, there are some segments that include a number of GIS application areas and business GIS. For example, telecom, water resources and the government sector. User interface. It is often only after selection and installation of the GIS that users who may not have been consulted in the process of choosing the GIS then observe that the GIS would perform very quickly if only somebody knew the commands to type. Unfortunately, this insight comes too late. There is a need for a research for developing methods for formally assessing usability so that it can be introduced into the selection process, thus forcing GIS vendors to pay attention to this aspect of their products. Software for geographic information systems is not normally sold as a one-size-fits-all solution such as MS Word but rather as a collection of special data processing tools. Some GIS packages contain over 2000 such tools. The absence of a concrete mental model of how the system functions and without proper training, a user of a non-customized GIS would likely find use for only 5% of the available functionality as has been demonstrated with the use of the word processors. These scattered tools need to be assembled into a specific GIS application by experienced technicians or programmers. Application generation involves, among other things like grouping individual tools into functional subsystem, menus or macro commands. The GIS often comes with an internal macro language for this customization and the most recently released versions allow customization in standard Windows development tools such as Visual Basic and Power Builder. Many of the tools in the GIS are interface related tools like menus, dialog boxes, pointing and data input device support, etc. 
it is the experienced technician's job to translate end user needs into workable solutions given the GIS toolbox selected. Important GIS user interface issues. The major issues of GIS user interfaces, the focus here is on the quality of the use, not the functionality. However, the quantum of functionality is a usability issue. More functionality puts additional burden on the user because the user may need to select functions from large list of items. More functionality may force the user to search out tricks and shortcuts during the execution of task. If one is able to execute these tasks at all. Future GIS users interfaces. 15 years ago, very few computing or GIS experts predicted the graphical user interface revolution brought about by the X Windows and MS Windows environments. Equally, we cannot predict with certainty what the next generation of GIS user interfaces will be, but we can address the strong trends that we see today. There are several technological trends to be expected to continue in the near future. Internet usage. This is wide ranging implications because it has already transforming the architecture of GIS software where instead of dedicated workstation and GIS package, some users are able to utilize www that is world wide web browsers at zero cost to access server based geographic information. These distributed applications require simple user interfaces to support only visualization and interaction or that is the query task and they assume that the processing will be handed at the server side. Object orientation. Together with the internet object orientation as a new software development paradigm is changing the ways GIS software is developed, customized and used. The user interface of the future will need to greatly facilitate the customization process allowing users to pick and choose the software modules or objects needed at any given time. Note that this is directly related to the standards of the Open GIS Consortium, especially their distributed object model. Portable computing. The distributed architecture and object orientation described is leading to GIS system which are more portable. The former allows for the various modules and data to reside in various sites on the network and the later allows for the portable computer to load and run only a specific modules needed at any moment. Portable software application will require compact and simple interfaces due to the small size and processing capabilities of the handheld hardware units. Real-time access to high-resolution satellite data. The increased processor speed, higher disk volume and imminent availability of near real-time satellite images will allow the future GIS to monitor quickly changing conditions such as traffic or forest fire application instead of simply displaying historical data maps produced months earlier. This will require interfaces capable of filtering huge amount of information and perhaps allowing user to view only the changes since the last data set was downloaded. Resuming, the future of GIS seems to be in increasing portability, modularity and flexibility. User interfaces must adapt to this trend and allow better and faster user customization. Guidelines for the preparation of a GIS. Preparing a GIS involves the following. Conduct a needs assessment, define proposed application and objective, execute an economic analysis for GIS acquisition, select among alternative systems and equipment, establish a database. Benefits of a GIS may be so compelling that the decision to acquire a system can be made with a little hesitation. In most cases, however, the decision can only be reached after a thorough analysis. Here, there are some systematic processes for reaching a decision about acquiring a GIS. Potential user must remember that a GIS is not always the right tool for a given situation and it may not necessarily pay for itself. Obviously, 
the trade off in both these options is lower cost versus independence of action but if the partnership also brings improved working relationship and compatible data to a group of agencies that work on common problems these benefits may exceed the independent cost the question offers planners some guidance as to whether an existing system is suitable to their needs another opportunity for reducing investment cost is the user of existing equipment if a computer is available is it compatible with the gis envisioned what are the economic and institutional cost of time sharing and inconvenience the key elements needed for the planning of a gis depends on the factors like the software purchase cost the hardware configuration needed to fit the software requirements the need of a new computer and the options has to be included or the cost of acquiring a new computer versus upgrading an existing one the anticipated hardware repair and maintenance and software support cost the personal requirement for the installation and operation of a gis the question of whether existing personnel can be used or new personnel need to be hired the need of a computer programmer and the anticipated cost for training the cost of allocating personnel to hardware and software maintenance the expected cost for the data input process the number of staff needed to be hired and assigned to digitize the information the cost involved in maintaining the data generated for and by the system the availability of secure facility suitable equipped for protection of computers and data files determination of data needs and sources for the application selected data on natural hazards demographic data and location of population are prime concerns of natural hazard management and should be defined very early in the process infrastructure and settlement sites provide a logical link that makes gis useful in identifying population location when this information is combined with the recent data detailing changes in land use a clear understanding of where the people are located and what kind of activities they are undertaking and how they may be affected by a natural hazard can be obtained with this information disaster prevention preparedness action can be initiated criteria to be considered when planning for a gis acquisition are the hardware software cost and vendor support hardware the hardware criteria consist of the cpu system unit and features and peripherals the cpu system unit includes microprocessor memory capacity disk drives backup system expansion capacity of the memory and other peripherals io channels communication ports compatibility standards and the warranty items of the hardware features and peripherals include keyboard monitors printers power supply and networking capacity software the software criteria consists of the system software utilities software and application software the system software criteria consists of the capability of the system software flexibility and compatibility of the system software expandability of the system software special features and documentation of the system software cost this criterion consists of initial investment for the cpu monitor printer cost of additional components such as digitizers adapters and other peripherals transportation and delivery charges installation charges upgradation charges and training cost vendor support this criterion consists of maintenance and training the maintenance criterion consists of maintenance of staff the existing consumer base the service facilities the inventory of components the guaranteed response time and the capability to deal with the entire system the training criterion consists of the experienced staff the facilities available and the range of courses offered once this information requirements are identified the sources that will provide this information should be distinguished usually a number of first hand sources of information already exist including maps and other documents field surveys and remote sensors the wide array of gis applications presented 
illustrates the value of GIS as a tool for natural hazard management and development planning. As demonstrated, the geographic information system can improve the quality and the power of analysis of natural hazard assessment, guide development activities and assist planners in the selection of the mitigation measures and in the implementation of emergency preparedness and response actions. Personal computer based GIS are the best option for a planning team. Even so, the planners will have to select between the scores of available hardware configuration and software capabilities, price and compatibilities. Given the typical financial and technical constraints that prevail in Latin America and the Caribbean, the hardware configuration must be simple and affordable. For IBM compatible system, for example, a standard central processing unit, a high resolution monitor, a small digitizer and an optional color printer are usually effective enough for development planning agencies need and can be easily purchased at affordable prices in most countries of the region. Large and sophisticated equipment requires more technical skills, is difficult to maintain and repair locally and the added capabilities may not be significant for the planning agency's needs. Similarly, there are many GIS software packages to choose from and accordingly a wide variety of capabilities and prices are available. Usually, the more expensive the software, the more powerful the analytical capability and sophisticated the output options. However, added capability, particularly in the areas of cartographic quality output is not always necessary and may not pay for itself. Prices range from 100 to more than 50,000 US dollars. Although inexpensive system lack certain feature present in more expensive one, they have functional capabilities sufficient to meet the basic analysis need of the natural hazard management activities. It is wise to start with some of these modest system and later expand them according to the agency's need. Other aspects that should be considered are the data availability and institutional support. For a GIS to be effective as a planning tool, any problems and difficulties in obtaining data from institutions with different mandates and interests must be resolved. A good understanding for sharing information between the different agencies involved in collecting, gathering and using data must be established to ensure the dynamic nature of a GIS. One last issue planners will have to face is the difficulty they will encounter in implementing GIS result. When it comes to translating the GIS result into planning guidelines or mandate, it is not uncommon to see them rejected for political, economical and other reason. This may become more complicated at the local level. When local data needs are generalized and included in a GIS for a large area, conflicts due to people's detailed knowledge of the area may arise. Natural hazard management requires cooperative at all levels to be successful. Convincing the decision makers that a GIS can provide timely, cost effective and correct information is a critical step that needs support and attention for every program addressing natural hazard management issues. Application of GIS Possibilities and Limitation GIS is a useful tool particularly because of its capacity to support both spatial and non-spatial attributes and to combine purely representational techniques with analytical techniques. It can also be useful for handling data from diverse sources and forming links and interconnections between them. With a number of agencies and organizations involved in planning, the integrated process can well be a participatory process, whereas GIS can serve as a common platform and interface that permits data exchange and collaborative decision. Although most data in GIS has to be georeferenced, non-commercial solution such as those in the environmental context are now looking at the ways to integrate non-geo-referenced information in GIS. However, increasing reliance on rigid cartographic renditations make these map extraneous, which can otherwise be a very useful resource for lending an insight into how perceptions of people have evolved over time. Although 
commercial GIS packages are still incapable of applying statistical analysis to such loose representations. There have been a few recent efforts to integrate the perpetual maps in the process of understanding of our environs and such integrations could be made more effective by developing analytical techniques that need to be and could be applied to such cognate models. Whether visual renditions can be converted into network for analytical purposes in the urban context would depend on the kind of information that we seek out of them in the process. It can be highly useful if such statistical analytical packages can be linked with GIS allowing the interchange of data that is mapped as network structure and as visual spatial representation. GIS allows an immense possibility of data storage and retrieval. In the Bhopal urban center, the level of complexity is huge and the involvement of multiple agencies that influence the urban landscape demands data collection on several levels and across several dimensions. When this data needs to be manually processed, spatial and non-spatial information can be linked only by limited option, such as keys next to maps or by the use of graphical techniques such as colors and symbols. Databases for managing large data sources are now being widely used. But the correlation of the data from more than one source is still mostly limited due to data protection policies that exist between various organizations. GIS can provide a base for the spatial and non-spatial data to be interlinked and developing techniques such as relational databases or object oriented databases in GIS can realize an added advantage of linking non-spatial data across several levels. Research in the field of multiple view is working towards the creation of parallel view where the same datum can be viewed across several different maps or layers of spatial information. In this instance, GIS provides the advantage of linking database to information from maps that may be created in other software packages such as AutoCAD. GIS allows data input from such diverse sources as remote sensing, traditional cartographic maps, aerial photograph and other photographic images. It can be hoped that the data dissemination policy in India will soon be defined for less restricted data exchange and the data from remote sensing and other satellite information would be easily available for commercial purposes. Most European nations have relaxed their data protection rules which allows for the better exchange of data at a global level. If historic cities are being seen as global resources and their preservation is to be seen as a global responsibility, then it is fair to hope for information to be much more conveniently accessible at a global level. With the internet forming the prominent interface where most global communities interact, more and more data resources are being made available on the world wide web and any GIS application in the Indian context will benefit from a flexible national policy of data dissemination allowing for greater exchange. Summary As increasing as GIS may look, it is not a suitable tool for planning applications. Most of the benefits of such an automated system lie in the ability to perform repeated spatial calculation. Therefore, before making the decision to acquire a GIS, planners need to determine what planning activities could be supported with the system and carefully assess if the amount of spatial calculation and analysis to be performed justifies automating the process. If only a few calculations are foreseen, it will probably be more cost effective to rely on local draftmen to draw and overlay maps and calculate the results.